Hi everyone and welcome to the Architects channel. My name is Sara and in this video we're going to talk about the importance of the comparative matrix and why it is crucial to pick in the right projects that you're going to present as part of your portfolio for the ARB prescribed examination. Let's get started. If you're at the beginning of your architecture diploma conversion journey here in the UK, then you're probably starting to think about what kind of projects do you want to submit. And if we're treating this whole endeavor as a project in and itself, then you kind of need a project brief that will guide you through the process. And that project brief is in the comparative matrix. So what is the comparative matrix? It's technically a form that you need to fill and submit alongside other paperwork, like copies of your transcripts, copies of your uh, official diplomas, etc. And you submit this right at, at the beginning before you even submit your portfolio. This is for the ARB to assess your application and make sure that you're eligible before they invite you to submit your portfolio and invite you for the interview. The comparative matrix is divided in three sections. The first one is, you know, just where you write your name, what, what part of the exam you're applying for, etc. The second part is where you summarize how you think your project meets the several criteria that are divided into 11 as per the general criteria. The third part is a table where you map your projects against each one of these criteria. If you've noticed, the first section has a very strict word count that you need to respect. And if that tells you anything, is that out of all the written work, that you are submitting as part of your submission, the text in the comparative matrix is the, the written evidence that the jury is most likely to read. This means that this is the most important piece of written work that you're going to submit. And you need to treat it as an, like an exhaustive executive summary of your work. And this is literally your chance to sell your work and to show the jury that you know what you're talking about. The main purpose of the table at, at the end is to be kind of like the navigation key for the jury on the day. And that's because you have to understand that the jury only have one hour to assess your body of work, to assess your portfolio. And so they need that key that will guide them and that will help them navigate very quickly uh, through your work to find the evidence, assess it quickly, and then tick the boxes on their end. The table also offers enough room to map up to eight projects against the criteria. But what does that mean? Does it mean that you need to submit eight projects? Let's look at the guidelines on the ARB website about this. You are expected to provide at least two holistic design projects to demonstrate presentations using a variety of media and to generate a broad range of project types. Etc. And be careful not to use too many projects as this will make it very difficult for the examiners to carefully consider the material in the allotted time of one hour. Equally, you should not rely on only one or two projects. Whilst it is possible to cover all the criteria with, the simple, with a single comprehensive project, it is a risky strategy. The matrix suggests a maximum of eight projects, which you might wish to use as a guideline. So, what does this mean? Does this suggest that you need to submit eight projects? And the honest answer is that it depends. It depends on your training, the kind of projects you've worked on previously, the kind of work experience that you have, the material that you have access to. And ultimately, you need to ask yourself, if you were to submit eight projects, do you think you can go enough in depth in some of these projects to still tell the whole story of your project, but still keep your submission under 80 pages? The second question that you need to ask yourself is that, is it really necessary to submit eight projects or am I just creating more work for myself? To answer these questions, the first criteria give you a clear indication on the direction you need to take. So GC1 says you need to prepare and present building design projects of diverse scale, complexity and type in a variety of contexts 
using a range of media and in response to a brief. And then understand the constructional and structural systems, the environmental strategies and the regulatory requirements that apply to design and construction of a comprehensive design project. So really, um, it is a spectrum between two projects and eight projects. And depending on your background, you need to find that sweet spot. For me, that sweet spot was six projects. I submitted an education project, two residential projects, which counts as one sector, an industrial project, and a community project. I found that these four sectors gave enough variety of the kind of brief that I wanted to present. And then some of them were in Morocco in different context and some of them were in the uk again in completely different context i hope you enjoyed this video leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or if you want to tell me how many projects you ended up picking for your submission hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one